Rugby World Cup warm up, folks. Argentina up against South Africa. Rematch from last week's one pointer. We are going to go through some squads, some recent, recent history, and some stats predictions. And you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Um, I don't think either side will be entirely chuffed on how they went last week. Um, Argentina, if they'd kicked their goals, certainly could have got things a bit closer. Um, the sighting of Malia, the fullback, certainly not gone down well uh, in some quarters. And then the amount of drop ball we had from the South Africans was also kind of disappointing, I'm sure, for South African fans. But yeah, both sides have another chance to go at it. And for Argentina, they've got a chance to break this recent losing record they've got against South Africa. They haven't got any results from the last five. Although, as I said, they did make it a 22 21 game last week albeit it was kind of a consolation try rather than one that could have genuinely won it so it's harder to know you know if it had genuinely been within one score at the death would we have seen more desperation and one up from the defenders and uh you can't put yourself in that kind of what if situation but yeah either way it did finish a one pointer which pretty close uh, for argentina this week they have kept things that kind of core stable, but uh, also with a little bit of change. They've kept Gajo, Montoya, and Cordella as their front rowers, which I think is, uh, I think I said it last week as well, I think that's going to be the World Cup starting front row for Argentina. And I do think with Cordella with his scrummaging power, uh, Gajo getting better in the scrum and also his ability around the park, plus Montoya's leadership ability to break down tackling stats and whatnot, I think it's a pretty good, uh, front row for the Argentinians. Rubiolo comes in at lock in place of Polos, who's out with concussion because he had a big hit last week, sadly. So hopefully he's on the mend. And then Lavanini, who has been great. His work rate last week was immense. He continues on at number five. Matera, Grondona, and Juan Martin Gonzalez. That's the same six, seven, and eight as last week as well. And they were really effective. Matera had like 10 tackles in a game where they weren't committed to making that many tackles because they had so much ball but um yeah they're doing really well for themselves uh Bertrand though comes in at nine he's up from the bench where he finished the game bloody strongly finished it with a try bossed the team around the park well which is his job so uh yeah, I'm, i'd be happier if i'm an argentinian fan seeing him starting ahead of um, bazan Balez, but uh, there's a big experience gap between those guys as well carreras continues on at 10 and I don't want to say hopefully, but probably he's not going to have to do the goal kicking this week because Bofelli is back in, which is maybe a bit of good news because Carreras, what was he last week at 57%? Yeah, they left a few points out there from the boot, sadly. Uh, Chocobares and Sinti continue on at 12-13, and I am quietly pleased with how those guys have gone. I still want to see Sinti kind of keep this thing up, and Chocobares, after being out for as long as he was... Uh, gets a chance to really get a bit of regular international game time. And then new wings, Bofelli is back. As I said, that's good news. Not just for his boot, but he is a dangerous man with the boot. And then Santiago Carrero, uh, he's going to have to impress because Mateo Carreras has looked on fire. I would say it's going to be Bofelli in one of the back three spots alongside Mateo Carreras plus one more, but there is still game time between now and then. Martin Bogado comes in at fullback. He played a handful of games for the Highlanders this year, but I don't remember seeing a heck of a lot of them. He's on his test debut, so congratulations to him. Hopefully he goes well. Uh, Augustine Crevy is on the bench, and he will be getting his 100th cap when he comes on. It occurs to me that they may have saved this. Uh, they didn't play him last week. Maybe they saved this 100th cap for him at home for a reason because he'll be the first ever Puma to get to 100 caps so that's a massive massive shift so big congratulations to him uh, Sklavi and Bejo are your prop replacements uh, Petty is back into the side we haven't seen him play any rugby for ages so fingers crossed he's 100% fit Iso is still there Bazan Belez, like I mentioned Albanoz and Moroni uh, round out the rest of the side as I mentioned Malia ended up getting sighted and um, Moroni had like 35 run meters last week and was the Puma's top run meter guy that's an area they need to be better like they've got so many attacking threats and so much ball but it's hard for them to cut teams to bits they've got the talent so I will be interested to see how things break down this week um, for South Africa massive changes massive there's only two guys who started last week 
who start this week. So Inyakani and Bonambi and Thomas Dutoy, that's your front row. So Inyakani and Bonambi are up from the bench, and Bonambi captain of the side for the first time. So big congratulations to him. And Thomas Dutoy is uh, starting at tight head. So big congratulations to him as well because we haven't seen him start for a wee while. Uh, Jean Klein is there alongside Marvin Ori. Marvin Ori is one of the only guys who retains his position last week, and I think. They indicated it might have been going to go to Lutayaka, but because he's got a bit of a chest infection or something, they've kind of kept Marvin Ori. So they may have gone with even more changes. Uh, Dion Fouri, Franco Mostert, and Jasper Vita, that's an all-new back row. Um, you would expect to see Dion Fouri putting the pressure on uh, at the breakdown, Mostert getting through all the tackles, and then Jasper doing all the big carries. But... Uh, remains to be seen, but each guy certainly brings a very specific skill set, and then Franco is also good in the line out as well. Uh, Reinach is alongside Marty Libok at 10, so Reinach at 9, obviously, Marty Libok at 10. Uh, Reinach back into the 23. Remember, Grant Williams obviously going to be out for a little bit, that's bad news for him, but a good chance for Corbus. And then uh, Marty is the other guy who keeps his starting spot, ran the ball well, still missed a few goal kicks as well last week, but scored a nice try. So those guys could do with a little bit of chemistry building, which makes sense. Andre Esterhazen, I thought he would be back at some point. After his opening game, he had to be back at some point. So I'm very pleased to see him uh, back in the number 12 jersey. It's genuinely a shootout between him and Dale Ender, isn't it? But I mean, Dale Ender scored like a mall try last week. So maybe he's still ahead in the scheme of things. But yeah, him and Lacanio Armour are alongside each other in the midfield, which is great. And then Kane and Moody is another one. Needs a bit of game time. Uh, and he's going to get some. So it's tough with the Springboks, with Moody, with Mapimpi, who's in the squad this week, and then also you've got Colby and you've got uh, Aronsa. Um, yeah, man, it's tough picking, but you got plenty. It's a good problem to have, what can I say? And then Damien Willems, he gets a, a go at fullback, so Vili uh, gets his first kind of rest of the campaign after playing every other game thus far. Uh, on the bench, Dweba is back into the 23 um they talked a little bit about him in the press conference about how he kind of short of minutes but a lot of teams third hookers are short of minutes according to old Ninaba so he does seem to be a little bit off the pace compared to Marx and Mbunambi but um I've seen him play some good games for the Stormers just not consistently eh uh Sten Camp is going to get his debut if he comes off the bench so big congratulations to him alongside Vincent Koch Jean-Luc Dupria I think that's his first game of the campaign as well after being with the squad for a while uh, Ruiz is there too, but it's three backs this time with Herschel Yankees getting his first crack of the campaign. Jesse Creel and Kurt Lee Aronsa there as well. Whew. Bunch of changes. Bunch of changes. Um, last week, man, Argentina had the position. Argentina had the territory, but like I said, they didn't get that many run meters from it, which was a bit concerning. Uh, and South Africa, 41% position, 41 position, still managed 20 turnovers conceded. Jeez. There was some hard viewing last week from, from all the drop ball. But they did tackle at 87%, and one of their tries was directly a defensive play turned into some counterattack. So, yeah, and they managed eight clean breaks to six. They managed more run meters with less ball. So there is some, still some positives there. And as I mentioned, Argentina's goal kick in 57% will need, to be, will need to be better if they're going to get a win. Um, average score across the last five is 31-17, but as I mentioned last week, was only a one-pointer. Uh, the Georgian Nika Amushkeli is the ref. But yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. If you can pick some results for upcoming rugby games, I've got a Super Brew pool for the World Cup if you want to join in. I'll chuck a link down in the description for the old Super Brew pool. It's always a bit of fun. And um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on how you think this one is going to go. Improve performance from the box to get the job done and keep the streak going. Or do you think to celebrate Krevi's 100th, they're going to do something a bit extra special? You guys let us know your thoughts, and uh, we'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.